What is up guys, Black over here, and we're back with another video of Dream Daddy. I know, it's been a while, but we are back, and let's jump right into it. Let's go. Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. A little this cold is out down the way. Does everybody live here? Me too, we've just finished unpacking today. Great place, good neighbors, well, some of them. Who's there? You guys will see Robert's office is just a few hours, a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. <coughs> I don't kiss and tell Cyrus. So are we doing this or what? What? You know, do you want to come inside or not? A little realization rushes over me. I blush. Lay it on smooth, smile and nod, no thank you. Lay it on it smooth. Well, I don't see why not. That's not as new in my head. <coughs> Let's do it. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabs my hip. Ooh, it's my good juicy! Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs into what I assume is his bedroom. But it's so dark. I can't see anything about Robert's intense expression. Ooh. He kisses me again. I can hear him sh shucking, shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest suddenly, and, and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. We're doing it today. Robert, do you want to stop? No, no, we. Hmm, she stop. Nah, let's continue. No, good. Woo! Over continues unbuckling my bow and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. All right. I look around for Robert. Find myself alone. Damn. <coughs> Robert just dipped. It's his own house. Damn. Hello. There's a clatter from the bathroom and door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, I was. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later. Robert cracks a smile. Look at that smile! Look at that smile! Sure. Your clothes are over there. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The thing is unbearably bright. I lie down. I tried to make my way back home and suddenly I remembered. Amanda! <laughs> You forgot you had a child! I forgot I had a child. I rush back home, throw the door open, something smells delicious. Amanda? Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Aw oh, man, I was kinda hoping you had gotten kidnapped or I was gonna have to come rescue you. No, I, I uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at this place. Where are the DMs? They left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, watch some movies, ate some snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. You change in your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Well, there's hash browns, eggs, and bacon. Can I? Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless your sweet child. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Oh, somebody is hungover. Father of the year. You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or. I've got just a thing. Hang on. Amanda runs to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Amanda? What? Drink this. Pickle juice? Yep, 
it's what I used once. I would assume someone would use. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Although I never tried it before, I won't try it. Obviously. Who raised you, Amanda Ann? You were stirring it. Who raised you? Um, uh, you did. Right. Um. Do as I say, not as I do. You got it. This better better work. I done a sip of the tart juice. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. I mean, I assume. Watch it, you. <laughs> this will be me. I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda had graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and ducking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk, I started to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Bagel, okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. A secret handshake, and she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance on my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. Back to 29. Medicine is not always the best, best medicine. True. Back to 31. You're young. You have your health. Now it's time to take a risk. Let's go. That's a nice tip. I'll take that. I'll definitely take that tip. I remember me into school. Check at the front desk. Then they gave me a bright orange visitor sticker and sent me on my way. I'm barely awake, feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. <clears throat> I check my watch and I'm relieved to see I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room of one? I mean room of three? Oh. Or 103? What is it? <laughs> I cannot read. Was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker approaching for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks up and down with a heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid. I don't I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs to the left. Can't miss him. Head up to the stairs, walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's classroom anywhere. After a couple minutes, I'm searching and head back down there. That punk you sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where the low rent girt away is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind. When suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Lucian, do you have a third period to get to? Sorry, fine, Mr. Vega. Wow. Now, I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. Um, we're not cool. You must be Cyrus. This pier is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Mr. Vega leaves me in, and I take a seat in one of the comical small student desks in the back. I may get stuck in this. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Sellers' catcher in the rye? You ask Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the rook of his elbow to make a fart noise. The whole class interrupts into la erupts into laughter. Alright, alright, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Now, Colin Caulfield is an unreliable, unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period to ring, and all the students immediately get up and break and make a break for the door. I cannot read today. Remember to do the reading and answers to the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. Mrs. Becca turns to me and sighs. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Thanks very much for coming in. No problem. Mr. Vega? Please, call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. 
what's going on? Amanda has been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda was always. Um, I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. I didn't cross my mind that something might be wrong. I just want to ask, is everything okay at home? You just moved, she's fine. She has a tendency of bottling things up. You just said you guys talk. She seemed fine. <coughs> it might be the moving. We just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it, had, it was only to the other side of the town. And Amanda was excited about it than I was. See, if you can talk to her about it, I know she values you a great, a great deal. I would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, you know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to. Her. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Yes. Did they ever catch that right? Yes. Woo, we got a little hearts! <laughs> oh, how sweet. I'm not on a roll on my reading thing. I leave the classroom, make the way out of my school out of the school. <laughs> my school. Whoa. I'm still a little I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for her positivity in life. Especially after we lost her father. Man, I might be done with class for the day by now. I'm sure she'll appreciate it right home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the car to the carpool. Amanda hops in the pa passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Reagan, I actually just gossip about our celebrity crushes. So, you talked about Mario Batali the whole time. It was a very productive meeting. Pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Oh, we can make something at home. Let's go to the mall food court. Some bonding will be nice. Cool. I think our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal. Ready for our food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it'll at least be edible. That's the spirit. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I shall say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Maybe they're a little cooler than you. Give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? Never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning and turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to the stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. You can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She said for the laugh. <coughs> What's so funny? Uh, it's a. I don't think you'll get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Yep. Do you like Noah? What? No! Dad! Ugh. I can't believe you would. Dad. 
I mean, jeez. Why would you? <sighs> Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. <laughs> Jeez. She got too riled up for that. You know they mean something more than just a friend. When you act like that. Don't be a fucking Adrian. And just be like, oh, he's just a friend. We all know he's more than a friend, sweetie. We all know. I didn't read that. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. Dad, tip 72. The only acceptable time and place for decaf, decaf coffee is never and in the trash. Well done. And me and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artisanal? There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. Dad, please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Plus, it has bacon in it. Aren't we as a society collectively over bacon? Bacon never stops being good. It's just as a PR problem. <laughs> get to work on the recipe. Amanda reassuring things out and handing me, handing me, <laughs> Handing, handing them to me to throw in the bowl so I can feel useful. God, my reading is not on point. Amanda puts puts me on bacon duty. So I chop a bunch and toss it in a pan and get it sizzling. The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor. Pops, not only are we going to want the fullness of cheese and bacon, but we also need the counterbalance and with the crunchy mouthfeel of bread, bread, bread crumbs. Check on bacon. Mouthfeel? Check on bacon. It's so pink and rubbery. I give the pieces a little start. Wait, what's a mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff in it, then the texture. Uh, listen, I've been watching a lot of food channel and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. No, no, I get that. Every time I watch that channel, I just feel in order, hungry, jealous, insecure of my cooking ability. Then hungry again. I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. <laughs> oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Gregorious? What the... <laughs> Lenticular boisterous defenestry. Check on bacon. We're gonna do this one. It has boy. Caddy wampus. Contagious. Tabernacle. Oh, discombob discombobulated. All of a sudden, the bacon burst into flames. I must have not been paying attention to how hot the pan was. Fire! Fire! Oh, God. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh god I run on the kitchen looking for anything to put it out they put out the fire I grab a cup of water I'm gonna snatch it out of my hand nope she puts it down and calmly grabs the lid from the pantry she places it on the top of the flames and turns on the heat I finally calm down did I almost just burn down our brand new house because I was too busy saying silly words in do it what Indubitable. I have bad speech. I can't even say much because my braces. I'm just gonna do Indu. It's short. Cool. Who wants takeout? <laughs> I mean, I order some Chinese food and eat on the couch of our new living room. She flips on the TV. Oh, cool. Long haul ice pro paranormal ghost records is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes! Then they make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice melts. But they're also hunting ghosts. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is the episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. 
Halloween Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghosts don't control the trucks of the truck! I can't steal on them, the damn ice roads! Let them use a MMP meter, try to communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die! Ah, almost got it! If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, you're gonna die! That's because we are about to die, you! This is hard. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Calum and Flint Dogbum. After the disastrous ice road accident afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Alright, now this tip. Drink plenty of water. That's tip 25. True. Stay hydrated. Always stay hydrated. Did my game freeze? Oh, I was like, what? Okay. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, you have never ever let me have five more minutes. So get up. Fine. We will see you for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. The man is much better at interrupting the tiny man manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves on one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So you excited for the cookout today? Excited to brief up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. You know we gotta you gotta you gotta bring the puns out. You gotta bring the puns out. Excited to beef up my grilling skills. Also this is a learning opportunity if I can snag some hot girl tips. I think they consider it a success. Don't you wanna meet some some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing comfortably in the corner with a play of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from that cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to fashion be late. We have to be fashion be late. Who shows up to the cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. <laughs> That's what you get, Amanda. You don't speak your mind. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with the store-bought veggie plate. We don't want to risk burning down the house again. I guess we're not as early as we thought. We were joke. We, we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts. Through the air, small children run through a sprinkling and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table to, next to two other veggie plates. Uh, hey, there's Joseph. I to get his attention. Mommy sees us. He jogs over us, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. But you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to two of my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Christine and Christy, they're twins. They stare creepily and say nothing. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe, maybe put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the one from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Joseph pecks on her on the cheek. She smiles. Oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to. Just to take some moment and regain his composure. Wow, not a good mother. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Cyrus and his daughter, Amanda. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, from for the first time. Charmed, well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this was awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. <laughs> you know what's coming? 
It takes all my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please do to enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Let me introduce you to Damien. Joseph beckons the hall and grabs a guitar for the girlfriend. Good evening, friends. Damien, this is our new neighbor, Cyrus. Ah, oh, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows. Oh! If you ever you're interested, it will be my great pleasure to host you for a spa tea afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds rad. Splendid, well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross again? Damn, what a classy dude. I like him. I want him. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know every everyone better. How you both enjoy yourselves. And as I mow around and try some of the food spread out on the table, I pick up some double eggs. I'm going to grab a small paper plate and immediately begins piling of baked goods. Oh, I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? I don't want to have to do please and please and trees. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about weather. Go do it. Make a friend. How can I possibly have my only child a social function? That's a bad parenting. The play of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Wow. Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well, he goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that a barista from the coffee spoon? Oh dang, Robert's here? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? The mysterious goth guy. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All these people live in our cruel in our cul de sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Hmm. Robert and Brian. I'll go over to Robert and Brian who are chatting over drinks and tell me not to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey guys! Sorry! How the heck are you? How are you? Selling into the neighborhood? Alright. Oh, you betcha. Got living in the odor at least? It's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Only got that 50 in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Sorry, have you met Robert yet? Yes, I believe we met briefly. Hey. Robert takes a long sip of the whiskey. Ah, not a good hey. Robert robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblinking to my eyes. Oh god, what does it mean? Uh, how's it going? It's good. Robert for focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. Great. Look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know. Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had a, you had kids. Robert continue, continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? Yep. C cool, that's cool. We sat incredibly uncomfortable in silence for several moments until... We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghosts locked the doors. These didn't mean to run up to us, thank god. Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess? And then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghost. But how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold blooded. I like it. Although I'm not sure I have to I have the materials required to cook to properly cook you. Wait a second. Are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. Man and I love that show. It's the best. Especially that episode where Kyle hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking ancient curse rune and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such a quality rally television. Alright. Daisy, I found a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gotta keep us from starving out here in the hearth. 
icy wasteland. There's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. <laughs> this child does not know how to be a child. <laughs> wow. Daisy, you look gorgeous, honey. But you gotta let that kid heart out. I'm gonna give Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mop disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Okay, but not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend. Now you're getting it! <laughs> Daisy is gonna run off. What a cute couple of kids. Turn my attention back to conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? I was getting to the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does does he not want to talk? Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of Robert and deuce haze. I guess the man is just sort of housed away with the kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with her with kids her age. Hmm, it's not like he's not trying to one up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every week in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her, by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I might have wish I had Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time. We took her to the restaurant. She bit people too. <laughs> kids, right? <laughs> Gotta love them. You're quite a two by law. Well, since they're getting along, so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them? Yeah, they're, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some other fellas. Hmm. Let's go down the road, because I want to talk with Damien last. Matt and Hugo's in in an intense discussion. Greg looks on, quite politely, and walking over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they are a unique byproduct of the social and poli political climate over time and place. And try to take something like, say, the Rocco period, Rocco, Rococo period, and compare it to the most modernism in America. And you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Man, he goes to be busy talking, they don't notice me. Greg lands in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Mmm, <clears throat> I kinda wanna listen to the conversation, but I don't wanna talk with Let's see, let's let's just listen. The kind of comparison just eliminates the reason of reason art. Movements are so important in the first place. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than another one. If you're evalu evaluating technical skill for, from a purely formalist standpoint, if I showed you a Matisse and then Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one you say shows more technical powers? I'm so lost right now. I should have worried glance over to Greg, who returns it. Well, sure, you could say that Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had better painting overall. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Well, that's pretty subjective. Okay. You don't want to say art is dead because art is not dead. I don't want to be so forward about it. Like, ha, ha, I have no idea. Well, we could. Let's go with that. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. I clicked, well, that's subjective. It's okay. We'll see what, we'll see what we'll go with that one. What do you mean? Uh, well, that painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. What do you see rocks? That's a Margriti. Right, art, sorry. You're fine, dude. We were just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. I said, all I asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. He got throws his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How can I possibly choose between the thick, 
creamy and pasta with po whoa. <laughs> <laughs> of post-impressionism and the abstractionist beauty of cube cubism. Man, that's all the way over my head. Me too. <laughs> it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a whole different effect on each other. That looks at it, and that's awesome. Just a minute about that. Here you go, please. Sorry, sorry, I get really fired up about the art stuff. Cyrus, how are you like in the neighborhood? It's pretty nice, and nobody's really in super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flowers. Flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is this, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you like I thought you looked cute in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and plays on his top of his head. Oh my god, he looks adorable! Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking thinking it over. Hmm. Nope. But you still saw you less uncool than you were before, but when before you put it on. Huh, hey, sorry, this is my daughter. Hello, I'm Carmesita. Amanda comes over with Daisy and with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and um, your teacher. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize you, you were neighbors. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Ha <laughs> great seeing you. <laughs> Amanda fingers her guns away out of the conversation like a champ. Taught her well. She learned the finger gun move for me. Very proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Hugo looks around the party. He must finally he fi he must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway, Vega, are you smoking? <laughs> oh, Ernest is holding a little a lit cig cigar. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He carefully takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it onto a gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. He go marches over to Ernest and I. Turn my attention to Matt and Greg. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. In the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my yard and burned down half my yard, too. Hugo <laughs> walks back to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Cyrus, this is my son, Ernest. Well, hello. Ernest looks away, slucking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. You go nudge him impatiently. Hey, nice to meet you, Ernest. What good are you in? Does it matter? Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm like in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you're just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch! Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts <laughs> earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was, that was certainly something. He seems nice. He will push his, puts his head in his hands and sides. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I wanted to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad and clearly resent me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it impossible to be a cool dad? What? I'm as cool as a cucumber. See that right there? You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be their cool dads? I, uh, 
don't know. <laughs> there we go. I think we just have to accept the fact that that we become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate. To unrecallingly wear socks to sandals. The kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit beauty, you're doomed. I'm gonna take Tina. She still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs and she just keeps laughing. I see your point. <laughs> As much as we all want it, I don't think it's important to be a cool dad. It is to be a good dad. We can't all be the best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh, it's Hugo. God, I messed up. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. But, doesn't, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. God, I messed up. I messed up. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time where it, might, it won't be like that. It's college when that happens. Don't let us eat up your time, Cyrus. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Mm, okay. So I'm going to stop here. And we're going to save Joseph and Damien for the next episode. We'll start fresh. Jump right into it. Get to know Damien, you know? So... I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if my reading was not on point. I you know I lacked, but it's alright. If you want to see more, go ahead and like and subscribe. You don't have to, but it really helps this broski out, you know? So I hope you enjoy this little video. And I'll see you guys later. Adios broskies. See ya!